Isles Forest Preserve. We're about to go on a nature scout hike looking for uh, evidence of plants and animals. So today we're going to be looking for um, deer, evidence of deer, evidence of coyote, evidence of otter, um, evidence of monarch butterfly or some kind of bird, maybe a robin. Uh, then we're also going to look for a few trees. We're going to look at a silver maple, sugar maple, white pine, and um, honeysuckle, and maybe some buckthorn. So first of all, we're right close to a sugar maple here. Um, you can tell it looks like the uh, flag of Canada, the leaf. This is the sugar maple. This is the best maple for getting uh, syrup. And right across over here, we have the silver maple which also has uh, five lobes, but the, it's, uh, the lobes are deeper. And that's how you can tell the difference. So you can see a silver maple here. Very distinct pattern, and then the lobes are very deep. Also, over here, we have our white pine. And cool thing about a white pine. So one thing I do with my kids when I play this game is seem like, what can you use these stuff, these things we find, what can we use them for? And one cool thing about, well the maple is you can make syrup out of it. The cool thing about the white pine is you can make tea out of it. And uh, the tea has a lot of ox, uh, antioxidants, a lot of vitamin A and vitamin C. Um, pine tea is good for if you're congested. And I'm going to show you how you can tell the pine tree. So I found a branch here that was dead. I'm not killing the branch or anything. And the pine needles will come in groups of five. So you can see off the bud. So there's a, the branch and then there's a bud. And then there comes five. Let me find a good one here that's not, hasn't, they haven't all fallen off yet. If you count right here, this looks like there's five right here. So you can see they all come from the same bud. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know if you can see that. And that's what you look for, and then you know it's a white pine. All right, so we're going to continue. And one of the things there's a lot of here is honeysuckle. Honeysuckle is an invasive, and it's a bush, and it's the second most um, populous invasive in uh, forest preserve behind buckthorn. So you can tell it its leaves are kind of um, oval with this pointy edge. Right now, it has white flowers that will turn yellow later. And if you notice, as we walk along, I'm going to show you, I'm going to point out honeysuckle time and time again. And whenever you see honeysuckle, look around and see if, it, if there's a tree close by that it's, you know, sapping, sapping from. Also, I can talk a little bit about the otter. We're going to eventually end up down by the creek, Poplar Creek. And the reason I picked coyote, deer, and otter, those are really my three favorite animals, especially the otter. Um, the otter is so playful and they're really cool because they have these muscular bodies and they're really good swimmers. They can stay underwater for like four minutes. They can travel a, half, a quarter mile underwater. You know, hold their breath and go. Their tail is kind of like a rudder. And um, they're very playful. They make, um, if they're somewhere where they're, they stay a long time, they'll make these mudslides. They're very playful. Here's some more honeysuckle. You notice this tree is looking kind of shabby. Okay, here we go. Looks like coyote scat. It looks kind of old. Maybe a couple months old. I don't know. Um, you can see it's got hair in it. And that's how you can identify the scat of a coyote. And then just down here, you can see it's some kind of dead mouse. So maybe the coyote was around here hunting. Scat and tracks are the couple of the ways we look for evidence. So I use these handkerchiefs that have the different kind of uh, tracks and scats. That coyote scat, the reason I said that was coyote scat, it had hair in it and also the shape. Kind of like this kind of shape. Yeah. I'm going to get a close up of that too. Um, deer scab is more pellety because they are vegetarians, so um, looks like this. We might see some. Mm -hmm. And the otter scat has scales in it, 
So you can see the these little things are uh, scales from fish scales because they eat fish. You see something? Oh yeah, I see a cardinal. Where you see that? Take over. Talk. Yeah. So it just flew by and I heard it first by its call, which is probably one of the best ways to find birds, especially as you look around at how dense the plants are. They're pretty hard to spot. But if you look over into that tree, you'll see a little red movement. That's a male cardinal. And I recognize it by it's got a very sing song kind of kind of noise. And so your ears are your best tool in finding birds, especially around here, especially if you get to learn some of their different calls. So maybe we'll get to get a little closer to that. Another thing to look for is American robins are very common around here. They're one of the most common birds. Out in this open grassy area is where you're going to find a lot of them springing up. It's hard to see again right now because of how dense the grass is. But they're ground foragers. They're looking for worms or insects. Um, and so you might see some of them spring out. I've seen a couple so far. In fact, one just flew right by there and is heading into the tree. So you can kind of look out for that orange belly and gray back. Lots of robins here. Their call is a little bit more typical to what you would hear of a songbird, a little harder and less distinctive than the cardinal, but still something that's easy to spot. You can see another one flying right by. And I did find some deer tracks here. Oh, one pretty good one here. And then there's, um, you can see here, here. And get this one. You might be able to find a better one. Right here, pretty good. Obvious uh, deer. Oh, here's some more. So, obviously, there's been a deer here. This is also a good place to spot some red-winged blackbirds. Again, your ears are going to be your best tool because they have a very distinct call. It's almost like a a long alarm or bell. Um, so if you look around here, especially through kind of tall grasses and marshes, you can easily spot them. Even right now I'm seeing some of them fly around, but like I said, they're hard to spot here, so your ears are going to be the best thing in finding um, these blackbirds with that red patch right on their wing. Uh, Red-winged blackbirds are very territorial, so if you are observing them or if you do spot one, you're going to want to give them their space. Uh, that way they're not coming to dive bomb you. You feel safe and they feel safe as well. It's best as always to observe nature and animals at a distance so that they feel comfortable, um, but you can also learn a little something from that as well. And right back there, it's climbing. That is hard to spot. That's actually a female red-winged blackbird. So they don't have that same uh, red patch on their wing or the deep black color, um, but the song or proximity to some males is what's gonna give you the tip that that's a female. Binoculars are a great tool to have if you're walking around in the preserves as well because you'll be able to spot a lot of things from a distance. On the ground here is a fledgling robin. Um, so this just means that it's too big for the nest. It's not living in there anymore as a hatchling, just born this year probably, but it's too young perhaps to fly on its own yet. Um, if you see this, don't worry just yet. Don't pick it up or touch it. Um, look around because you might see the adults. They will come down to feed them and take care of them. I'm going to give it its space, but if you are ever worried that they're injured, you can always bring them to a wildlife uh, rehabilitation center. But we're just going to keep going. It looks like it's very healthy fledgling and just give it its space. There's a trail right here and right by the trail there's um, some clams. If you, I'll back up so you can get an uh, image of that. And then there's a trail going this way. I don't know if this is uh, otter necessarily or some other animal. Thank you very much for uh, coming oh. along with us and hope you learned something today and uh, hope to see you again. Yeah.